afternoon, folks. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's Sean here from Happy Days Veg. It is Tuesday, the 25th of January. It is. I know that for a fact. I uh, hope you're all keeping well. And you find me in my shed working on this, this uh, more heavy-duty soil sieve. So, <clears throat> I've done a quick video of how I've built the actual drum, yeah? And I'm not going to do a video on how I built the frame, because that is open to interpretation and, and designability and what materials you've got lying around or, you know, what materials you can get your hands on. So this is just a bog standard, four legs frame, uh, holding this drum up. I'll, but I'll, I'll, it, it, once I've talked about this motor, I'll show you the pulley and how I fixed the pulley up there and the, the, the shaft it rotates on and the wheels on this other end. But I'll also put some uh, photos up. So let me put my glasses on. So, those of you in the know will know that I've built a compost, uh, a more lightweight compost siver, quite big, but it hasn't got no, it hasn't got no torque, it hasn't got the beef. So when you overload it, you know, it just, it just, grinds to a halt and the belt just slips and you can't really do much uh, about that with the design and the type of motor. Then I redone it again, it was a bit better, but I was using a motor off a treadmill, which is, uh, the motors on treadmills are all 12 volts. But without using all the electronic components and gadgetry that comes with a tread motor to run the motor, I don't know any way of being able to get more torque out the motor, the strength, yeah? I don't want it to spin round thousands of times per minute. I want it to turn around slowly, but with power. So when you put some load and weight on it, it carries on turning. So I've watched people build these using washing machine motors, go from a two inch pulley up to a 10 inch pulley down to a two inch pulley. And I'm thinking, you know, Pulleys cost a let me tell you, pulleys cost a fortune. I bought this pulley and that pulley, and they've cost me £35, complete daylight robbery, but notwithstanding. So, I've just been doing some experiments with uh, a washing machine motor, and that's the same. You can't control the torque, you can control the speed. So, if you want something to spin around really fast, like uh, you could make a, a, a sanding, a, a disc sander out of one. Uh, it'll spin around really fast, but because you're only pressing on very gently, the motor will carry on spinning. Whereas if you put a lot of load on, all you do is you just slow it down and eventually it comes to a stop and then you just burn your motor out. So I've learned my lesson there. And I was looking online on a well-known internet auction site and I came across this bad boy. Now, I was thinking about uh, a mobility scooter motor because they've got... They're 12 volts and they've got a lot of torque and a lot of power. Anyhow, this bad boy here is a, a miniature winch motor that came out of a, a big minibus, which was designed and, and uh, designed around being able to carry passengers who are wheelchair bound, yeah? And basically, this little winch motor came with a different pulley on there with a, about 20 foot, 30 foot of rope with a special clip that you hook onto the front of your wheelchairs. You turn it on and slowly but surely, it pulls the wheelchair with the person in it up the ramps into the back of the, the vehicle. Uh, and then, uh, then once you're on the vehicle, you're free to use your uh, wheelchair in its normal way. So I thought, Christ, if it's got the capability of pulling a wheelchair, and they're not light in themselves, with a, a, a person in, up a ramp, surely it's got the power to spin my rotating uh, soil composter, uh, not composter, uh, soil sieve. So, there was a starting bid Oh, before us going to the cost, they cost a fortune. 
they cost a fortune. If you want to buy a mini winch, they cost a fortune. So, this was a starting bid at 38 English pounds. Plus nine pounds postage and packing to anywhere in the mainland UK. Because believe it or not, this is very, I was surprised at the size and I was surprised at the weight, it's very heavy. So I've done some experiments and here we are. And in my opinion, it is the perfect, for what I need, it's the perfect answer to my problems, to my prayers. So, this motor has got a reduced gearbox inside. I'm not gonna go into all that, we don't need to know that. All we need to know that at 12 volts, this motor rotates, according to the label, at 78, uh, 78 uh, revs per minute. Not revs per minute, rotations per minute, yeah? The speed, yeah, 78 RPM, revolutions per minute, right? And I'm looking for half of that. But here's the beauty of the 12 volt DC motors. I'm not saying you can't do it with other motors, but it's easier on the 12 volt DC. If you buy, and here's one there, yeah, I don't know if you can see all that, a 12 volt speed controller it's got an on and off switch and a speed controller so you can adjust the speed so you adjust the voltage and if you reduce the voltage it'll run at a lower speed perfect so at the moment i've got it connected up to a, a leisure a big leisure battery you can't see it's just out of out of shot here right and your 12 volts come in to the 12 volt live and neutral on there yeah and it doesn't matter which way around you go, right? Oh, actually, I'm a liar. On this, it does. It doesn't matter on the motor. If you put live and neutral onto them connections, it'll spin one way. If you disconnect it and turn the wires back the other way, it will rotate the opposite way. So, sorry, I was wrong there. It is important. The red's the live, the black's the neutral. So you put your live and neutral from your 12 volt battery into there. Coming out, it goes into a switch which has got an, a rocker switch, which is off in the middle, and it's got one and two, so you can turn it both ways, and I'll demonstrate that in a second. And then you've got two cables that come out, blue and green, they can go any way round onto your motor. It doesn't make no difference. So, before we, before we, before I demonstrate it, because this machine's not finished, You've got to have some kind of capability of tensioning your drive belt. This is a V-puller, yeah? This is a C20 AX60. 13 mil by, 13 mil by, 1560. Can't remember what that is in, 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 in old money. So, what I've done is I've built a wooden bracket. So I bolted the motor to the back of there with four bolts because it's got four threaded holes in. I'll put some bog standard butt hinges there on a frame. So now that motor has got a couple of inches, well I say a couple of inches, I've done it so it's only got about an inch movement because this is set up. In the sides, and I'll, I'll, I'll put some pictures of this, I've got a piece of threaded rod with nuts and bolts so you can adjust it forwards and backwards on the hinges which will tension or loosen the belt. So I've got it set up, I've got about an inch deflection on the belt, which is perfect, yeah? That's that. Right, before we go any further, you know the rules, no tea, no work. And you notice as well, I've had my hair cut. So, up here, if you look at the other pictures that I posted in my last video, you'll notice that I put a round of heavy duty plastic bolted onto the end of there with a 25 mil hole in. And basically what I've done, I bought this six inch, this six inch pulley. I put it over the shaft and I've just bolted it straight through. So the pulley is bolted through the space of plastic and the lid of the drum. And the lid of the drum is being held on by this airtight rock solid clip here. So all that's removable, yeah? 
Admittedly, I've got to cut this off, but that's a job I'm going to do later because I haven't finished it yet. I just wanted to demonstrate this workings of the motor. So, I know it works because I've tested it because I had to adjust the belt. So, the power is onto the box. And as I say there, you've got a, a switch, a rocker switch, in, in the middle position, the machine's off, yeah? So, let me just turn that down. So, let me just turn that on. Nothing will happen because it's waiting to put the electricity, the 12 volts, through this little speed controller potentiometer. So if I turn this clockwise, it's got a little arrow on, if I turn this clockwise, hopefully this should start moving. Yeah? Yeah? I haven't measured the revs per minute yet. So, I'll turn it on full, full power. Right, so that is full power, yeah? Now, I, let, me just, let me just turn this off, because I don't want to waste my battery. The quicker you have your drum rotating, the quicker the material is going to shoot down and shoot out to the uh, exit holes at the bottom, yeah? So you've got to, have it, you've got to find a happy medium where the, the, the tumbler's tumbling your soil, giving it plenty of time to sieve itself, but not too long that it's not going down the, down the drum, yeah? So, they reckon 30 revolutions per minute. So, that's there. Oh, let me turn it back on, sorry. So that's there. And that's there, right. So I reckon between there and there, that is roughly half speed. Now I don't know how many revolutions that is, but what I'll do is, because I'm using my phone to, uh, to do this video, I've got a piece of tape on there with an arrow, and then I'll be able to measure it and see what the revolutions are. But the, rev the revolutions are ir irrelevant if you're not happy with the speed the material is traveling down your, your uh, rotating drum, yeah? Too slow, and it's, not gonna, it's gonna take too long to come down. Too fast, and it'll come down too quickly. So, I think that's a bit too slow, but notwithstanding, we'll worry about it, because you can just adjust this as and when you need. Right, so, why have we got a double switch here? Why have we got a rocker switch? Well, if you turn it off into the middle and let the machine stop, if you switch it the other way, right, if you notice, this is coming this way, yeah, this, the drum's spinning this way, if we turn it off and let the machine come to a, a stop, which I also like, because more or less it comes to a complete stop, you press the switch the other way, and the machine rotates in the opposite direction, yeah, which is, uh, not necessary, it's just the way this, this gadget came, but it's useful because if you get a bit of a blockage or whatever, you can uh, stop it and have it rotate another way, just to, you know, try and unblock your blockage a bit. So yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly quiet, it's quiet enough, yeah. It's superb. It's superb. So, let me just turn it off so I can explain. So, I don't know whether you can see. Let me just check the video. Right. As I say, this shaft is a piece of 25 mil. I'll hold that there. I don't know whether you can see it. Yeah. It's 25 mil galvanised electrician's metal <coughs> conduit. And basically, this end of the machine is being supported, the, 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 the end of the drum and the pulley, which are bolted together, are being supported on this, on this metal tube by this piece of timber here, yeah? Perfect, rock solid, you can hang off it, it's going nowhere. 
Now the other end, I don't know whether you can see. Right, let me just, let me just, I shouldn't do this, but just let me move you gently. Bear with me. Yeah. So, I'll never win an Oscar for my filming. Yeah. If you look there, you'll see that that is one of the rubberized wheels that I have filed down. And you, I, if you look at the other, the, the first video of this build, part one, you'll see how I've filed that down. That's a solid rubber wheel, and I've just put a big nut and bolt through it. I put it in the bottom of the, my, uh, I put it in the chuck of my pedestal drill, and then as it's spinning around, I just fold it off to the right shape, so that wheel fits in that grooved V-shaped lip at the top of the barrel there, yeah? Because everything is going in that way, and at the moment this is flat, but when this ends on wheels, it's gonna be, I'm gonna put two, two of these wheels on the end, it's gonna be slightly higher to give you a bit of a slope. So those wheels are stopping the machine traveling down that way, yeah? They're just sitting there, the weight, the weight is holding it on, yeah? I've adjusted it with lock, what, nylon locking wash, uh, nuts and washers, so they just move just enough. Give a quick squirt of grease, and it's perfect. Uh, squirt of oil, it's perfect. I've got one there, and I've got one there, yeah? Now the shaft, you can see that, I think you can see the shaft. The shaft is coming through there at the moment. I've got to push that shaft all the way back until it stops on there, and then cut that end off, yeah? The reason I put that shaft through there was because I contemplated having this end, so the, the shaft being supported this end, and then in the end I thought to myself, no, it'll just be in the way of shoveling your soiling. So that shaft's gonna be out the way, so you've got the complete opening. So that's that. What else do I know? Let me bring you back. Obviously, we're, uh, we're on the workbench. So, just let me adjust this camera now. Sorry about this, terrible alert. So, so I'll give you. I'll just give you one la little last demonstration of what it looks like. As I say, you can adjust the speed. Yeah, with this little potential, it's a little speed dial. That's maximum. That's too fast. You just turn it down and adjust it to suit your needs. It's got a, an on and off switch there, and it's also got a reverse switch so the machine can go backwards. Yeah. Now what I'm doing is, this isn't gonna be run off a, I don't know how long a leisure battery would last, but I'm gonna do some experiments, but I've ordered, uh, I've ordered a little transformer where if you put two, uh, two 40 volts AC in, which is what you get in your plug socket, in, you get a uh, 12 volt DC out. It's a little little metal box. So that's what I'm gonna use. Because then I'll be able to use this using, if I need to, using uh, my generator, if I had a lot of stuff to do away from the property. But this will be able to be plugged in either from here or my polytunnel, or I've got a plug on the wall by my house where uh, this might be doing all its work because it's it's fairly flat. So yeah, there she is. That's what she's looking like. So the next, I know this video's dragged on a bit, but there's a lot to get in. So if you've got any questions or queries, drop them in the comments below. Uh, if you could, sub if you'd like to subscribe and give me the thumbs up and maybe share the video, that'd be grateful. I'm just trying to build the channel up a bit. Uh, so the next video will be of me final, final machine with all the metal in so the sole can be taken out. Uh, I might give it a coat of some kind of protection and then I'm gonna decide uh, whether I'm gonna cut the tops of these timbers off. Uh, but we'll, we'll take it from there. But what is missing off this machine is it's, it's gonna need a little shelf somewhere so I can rest me cup of tea. So until then, you take care, hope you like this video, and I'll see you guys further down the track. Happy days.